Jones. The question is that the Assembly do now adjourn. Ms Chain. Thank you, Mr Assistant Speaker. <clears throat> Earlier this year, our city and community lost a Canberra icon in John Marshall, who you might know better as Mr Fruji or Canberra's own Willy Wonka. It's an honour today to share exactly what made him so special and the legacy that he leaves for Canberra. My thanks to Serena, Gary, Michelle, Kate, Evangeline, Susan, and especially Ed and Leon for providing me with memories to share today. John was born on 16 September 1958 in a small town called Wensbury in the West Midlands. Something we all know to be true of him is that he would never, ever settle being mediocre. In every aspect of his life, he was driven and he was determined. Canberrans know him best as an extraordinary dessert maker, but he had many interests. He was passionate about Kung Fu in his early years, winning 76 of his 78 bouts. He loved the water. He fished for fun and competitively, whether in the UK's rivers and canals or internationally, and he was an expert diver. He caught and swam with great white sharks. And he simply loved technology, training himself and then becoming a renowned expert. And it was this expertise that resulted in him being headhunted to Australia and continuing his IT career, first in Melbourne, then South Africa, then on to Brisbane and finally settling in Canberra. But John never rested. Like many Canberrans, I stumbled across John at a market. It's hard to remember exactly where, because he was a mainstay and constantly sought out, whether it was handmade or the old bus depot markets or the centenary celebrations or the farmers markets at Epic. You couldn't miss the Fruji ice cream stall because there was always a crowd. And John was always in full flight, talking, encouraging, hello darling, always obliging with taste after taste. And it wasn't just an ice cream stall. What made it fun was there was always a new flavour on offer. But we kept coming back because of the quality of and care that he took with the product, the texture, the taste, the flavour. Making his own chocolate for his chocolate ice cream and pavlovas for the Christmas time ice cream special. And we kept coming back because of John. He shared so much of himself, readily answering questions and always reaching out, asking how we were. He was never too shy with his flavours and he readily encouraged suggestions before making them a reality. Laksa, roast potato, durian, Vegemite and toast, beer, Christmas pudding, hot cross bun and black truffle. In 2015, Fuji transformed from a market stall to a permanent dessert laboratory in Braddon. It quickly settled as a must see, must do, must experience for locals and tourists alike. Not only were there the usual eclectic mix of ice creams and sorbets, and always with salted caramel on offer, but shoe with pipettes, New York cheesecakes, and his own delectable version of paddle pops. This new permanent home brought with it a truly family affair. John's wife Ed and son Leon had been regulars assisting at his many market appearances, but this took it to a new level. How lucky we've been to have been gifted with not just knowing John, but the joyous engagement with Ed and Leon, who he mentored. Everyone has their own Fruji story, whether it was the delight bloggers took in meeting him and experiencing his passion, to families visiting him to mark a special occasion. He made people happy. He made families happy. He delighted and inspired. But it was always about more than the ice cream and the desserts. It was about the conversation and the friendship, the passion and the engagement the kindness, and especially the generosity. John was supportive and caring. He was a great friend, always. One friend described how she told John she was having her wisdom teeth out. In response, John didn't just tell her that clove oil was a natural dental anaesthetic, but made her a special clove oil, oil ice cream to help recovery. And for me, in the weeks before his death, he reached out about my broken ankle. He offered suggestions to increase my mobility and support in his usual witty way. I didn't realise that they would be our last conversations. John leaves behind a legacy. 
An instigator of, and then so firmly, part of the Canberra food and food tourism scene. A boldness, experimentation, excitement, determination, but always firmly grounded in what matters most. Community, friends, and family. We have been so lucky to know and experience John's creations, but we have been so lucky to know and experience John. We miss him dearly. Thank you, Ms. Chain. The question is 